I just know. Okay, everybody, welcome to another episode of Friday Night Bricks. This is episode 50. Uh, we are in Brick World Hype, show number three. Uh, I've got uh, a special guest. Uh, he definitely is going to have some camera issues tonight, So, but the audio will work for it. So I've got Tom Atkinson. Tom, is Dave also there too, technically? He's technically here. I think he's trying to get on now. Oh, oh he's going to oh, try and do it from another computer also? Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. And we have Dave Guan also. So we've got two people uh, that are big into the GBC Technic stuff. Uh, Tom is, you know, obviously one of the bigger names in GBC. I definitely, uh, he has done a lot with it. And so uh, we're just going to start with some basic, you know, questions, Tom, just for, you know, for sake. Um, kind of like the first one, be like, when did you first get into Lego? Oh, boy. First get into Lego? Long before any of you were born. <laughs> Ooh. Um, <laughs> my, uh, you were a kid then, huh? Yeah. My, the story is that my grandfather brought home a set from Germany uh, when I was about one. And my parents took a look at it and put it on the shelf for a few years. Uh, but then some point later, three or four, they pulled it down and I started playing with Lego. Um, and I was hooked at that point until girls in car took my attention over when I became a mid teenager. Hey, there's Dave. <laughs> Dave, Dave is here. Cool. Dave. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> Playing camera shy. Oh, and he muted his mic. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so, well, that's cool. So, gr girls in cars. So, you did have a dark age, I take it then? I, I definitely, definitely did. did. From um, um, maybe, maybe 14, 14 15, 15, up until um, my, my eldest son, son was about three. And uh, from that point, um, um, he, he, he built, built a, a, set a set with his, his grandfather, and they had made a mistake. It was a Technic set. set. Uh, which, which led, led them to, to come, come up apart short. short. And, and so, so they got stuck. And so him and I sat down and figured out what the problem was and then went back and uh, finished putting, putting the whole, whole thing together. together. And by the time we were done, I was hooked. Cool. Now it sounds like we're getting a little bit of echo, so I'm not sure why that's... Uh, yeah, so. it's definitely Dave. Yeah, that's fine. I actually tried muting mine just to see if that would help too, just to see. That's fine. He's here. He's a... I muted it. He muted. Oh. So as long as he's mute, the world will be a better place. I mean, um, we won't have an echo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how long was your dark age? I guess I, I maybe missed that while I was. Uh, probably about seventeen years. Wow, that's a long time. That's a long time. So, do you have a favorite uh, theme or set? Well, a technic. I, I am uh, the technic is the thing that that drew me back into Lego and it was really uh, when I left Lego as a teenager uh, there were Samsonite gears there were no minifigs you know that whole aspect of Lego hadn't been born yet um, and so what drew me back in was the technic the gears the motors the levers so on and so forth uh, and that's that's really what what I'm into today, and that's GBC falls right into that. Cool. Uh, do you have a favorite set out there? Favorite Lego set? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I probably could name like 10 that I would say are my in my top 10, but I don't think I could pick a single favorite. Uh, but it's going to be things like the, the shuttle, the, that white large Technic shuttle. Um, the air tech claw rig, uh, the supercars, several of them. So it's it's going to be the larger, more more functioned uh, Technic sets. Well, we've got a question in the chat. Some uh, Brick Pasta was saying he wanted to learn more Technic framing. How does he learn about that? Um, framing. So for building large things. Um, it, it's all about triangles. It, you know, you could, it's easy to build something that's a rectangle out of Technic, but to make it strong, you have to brace it in triangles. 
And so Pythagorean comes in to play. Got to know your right triangles. Okay. Okay. So obviously we know what you what attracted you to Technic. What attracted you to GBC? Great ball contraption. Well, so Technic, there's really uh, prior to GBC, the only the only thing that Technic really did was represent um, things in the real world, tools or construction vehicles or so on and so forth. Um, so they tried to mimic these things. GBC was its its own thing. It wasn't necessarily trying to mimic something that already existed. It was just using the basic principles that exist. Um, so it became uh, an, an interesting chase of using a new principle, um, not so much try to make it look like this truck or make it act like this, you know, loader. Um, so it was really, you know, back to basics. And I really like that. And, and the fact that you can have, you know, a bunch of simple modules doing a bunch of simple basic things. And it's the sum of all that that is the big entertainment. You know, that's really what sucked me in. At, at Butt Shop said, how about Technic Blaming? I don't know what that is. So. Technic what? Blaming. Blaming? <laughs> blaming. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I understand what that means. I don't either. So, uh, so you, you're pretty much one of the main GBC organizers, pretty much, right? For most of the, for the con, for the most part, are you one of the um, main ones? So, at one point, I was the organizer for both Brick Fair and Brick World. Um, mm -hmm. But GBC has really uh, accelerated in its growth, and starting many years ago. Um, there's always been other guys that did, you know, almost as many modules as me, or they'd show up with a whole bunch of really cool new ones. So there's always been those other people, and they've always helped out a lot. Um, I've just been the guy that ended up being the leader most of these <laughs> times. Um, cool. Cool. So how many years so have you? How many years have you been doing the the GBC? Well, it, so the original. Uh, GBC idea came out of the Northern Indiana Robotics Club, and that was Steve Hassenplug and um, John Brost, uh, Brian Alano, uh, Tom Phillips, and I'm sure I'm missing one or two other people. Uh, Brian Bonhoom got involved pretty early, too. Um, and all those guys came up with the idea starting... 2000, very end of 2004, and Hassan Plug put on a, a call out on Lugnet to at Brick Fest 2005 to have the big first public event. And I didn't know anybody or anything, but I showed up with my one module and joined the group. And basically, I was hooked solid from that point forward. That was the summer of 2005. Cool, and, cool. Uh, well, so it, obviously, obviously, I've been at Brickworld since 2012. I've heard, I haven't built any of my own mocks, but I've, I've built some of the workshop ones if I've been able to make it to them. And I've actually copied um, – I've copied some of the modules. Um, actually, I'll grab one real quick here because uh, I copied Brian's. Uh, Brian's uh, – the step, the step one, the square stepper module. I actually uh, – actually, here, I'll put myself on the big screen here. Um, oh, right. The stackable module. The stackable module. Yep. And so I built one. We've been, we've been putting GBC in our Whistlog show. So this one is, I built it out of clear. Oh, that's that's cool. awesome. <laughs> and so, and so those, the yellow plates are all the translucent fluorescent. So they should glow pretty good under a black light. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get a black light for that for, for brick world. So I'll bring the five that I've got the five modules. So, but, uh, but yeah, cool. So obviously, I've been there. You know, brick, uh, in Brickworld, I've noticed within the last year or two, there are some very special tablecloths for the GBC area. I was wondering if you'd like to talk about those nice special tablecloths. Sure. Um, so there's there's two aspects of it. What what they are are a terry cloth, and this was something that. Uh, we determined a long time ago we needed something to kind of keep the balls from 
bouncing as much. And I tried a lot of different materials and just randomly drop balls on, you know, bubble wrap and foam and just a sheet and all these different things just to see something that would absorb the energy. And terry cloth was the thing I discovered did the most. And so at the time I went out and I bought a bolt of white terry cloth and I used it for a while, but white was a bad choice. Um, and it also over time, uh, got dirty, uh, started fraying around the edges and it was because of the way I cut it and everything, it could never be washed. So I knew I was going to have to replace it. Then <clears throat> as part of the money that Bill Bourne's wife, Kathy had donated to brick world, um, uh, Brian went out and got these tablecloths uh, that have the Brickworld logo on them. And then they also have different other things. They, some of them say Great Ball Contraption. Some of them say Bill Bourne. Some of them say uh, GBC. Um, and, they, and they're a black cloth, uh, which is better for uh, not showing dirt and so on and so forth. And it also, they're hemmed properly so we can wash them when the time comes. Um, so this was a very nice thing that really helped GBC look better and also hang on to the balls a little better. Um, and and uh, the interesting thing is that Todd Webb of Brick Fair has followed suit and done the same thing. He took some of the money that Bill Bourne's wife donated to him and bought terry cloth for his shows as well. So uh, it's a it's a nice thing. It helps keep the balls. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, now you're you're mentioning Bill Bourne's wife, and um, I actually I don't think I got to meet him um, as much as I probably should have. But do you want to talk a little bit about Bill? Because that's obviously something that um, obviously plays a part in those clots and all that, and actually in the community itself. Well, so Bill was. Um an AFOL for a lot longer than most of us. <laughs> um, I'm not exactly sure when he started, uh, but it probably was back in the eighties uh, as an adult, you know, doing things with Lego. Um, he was very much very active in the first Lego league. Um, he was very active in other things involving uh, kids after school programs. Um, mostly related to robotics. Um, and he had a humongous Lego collection. Uh, and when he passed away, he kind of left me responsible for to work with his wife to make sure that his collection got used for the best good. Um, and so that was a long involved process that I'm still not 100% through, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, he's been gone now for... Uh, three and a half years. Is that right? Yeah. I, I know so. he was in the documentary because I think I think I was sitting behind him or close to that. I think wasn't he right in the front row? I think of that one. Yeah. That? Yep. <laughs> you mean where they made us redo that surprise? <laughs> Possibly. Um, <laughs> uh, so, but the interesting thing was so after spending time with with bill's wife because uh, it took many 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 hours and many trips to her house to get her his stuff sorted out and kind of figured out where it was going to go um and she came to a couple of things that involved disposing of his lego we had a, a massive um set draft that uh just just went on for hours uh and there was the proceeds of that set draft, there was a minimal buy-in, went to the two lugs that he was involved with. Um, and so she got to know a bunch of the the AFOLs of those two lugs and basically wanted more. She wanted to know more about the people that Bill had gotten to know all this time. Um, so she ended up going to Brick World Chicago and Brick Fair Virginia uh, and got to know Todd and Brian and so on and so forth and gave each one of them a, a chunk of money to be to support GBC. And I now see Dave. Uh, are you guys getting echo? No, I don't, I don't hear one now. 
nothing. I'm not getting anything. Any echo. Good. No, not at all. Excellent. No, I think it's good. We banned him to another room. I say we, me and the dog. <laughs> well, it's it's kind of wild that you're both in the both in the same house. So that's kind of cool too. So that's neat. Thanks, Dave, for um, helping make that possible. I appreciate that. Anytime. Now you can like get rid of those uh, blackmail photos, right? <laughs> I, I suppose. If, if I, I want to hear that, about these, <laughs> I, gotta, I, I gotta find those. I don't know. So, what were the two lugs that Bill was in? That was the, that uh, knee of? lug, which is the lug and Dave and I are in, and then con lug, which is a newer lug that's just in Connecticut. Yeah, the one that I think was that the one that Kevin helped found, I think. Yes, that was pretty much why it exists, is because uh, Kevin wanted to go through the process of creating a lug. At least that's the story he told me. So, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Kevin, where is he? Uh, well, Kevin, I talked to him earlier today. He did his uh, his uh, doodle stream earlier this morning. His wife worked an opening shift instead of a closing shift, and so he might be hanging out with the wife. There's a chance we could maybe see him later. You just never know. A likely story. <laughs> it is a likely story. I mean, he's the one that kind of got me into this, into the Friday Night Bricks. I mean, he was probably one of the first ones along with you, Dave, that really kind of got it going. And so it's one of things where it's, it's kind of not quite as good without him. But that's why with these shows, I'm hoping we can make up for the lack of Kevin being present. So that's my goal. So. Someone just has to be goofy. That's all. Well, we all can be bad. Okay. <clears throat> we interrupted Tom. So I'm, I'm sure hopefully we don't, didn't lose his place where he was. Uh, that's all right. I was just yelling at the dog to stop whining at me to go out. Yeah, uh, do it often. You have to keep him, keep him in check a lot. So, you know. Ooh, me or the dog? Yes. <laughs> uh, you, you can keep talking about Bill if you want. There's still more to say, and that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I will finish. So Kathy got to know a bunch of AFOLs and, and really liked the whole environment, and that, I think maybe felt a little sad that she didn't get to know this crowd while Bill was still around. Um, I, th I think she just didn't, she was surprised at what she found, I think. So, uh, but she did. So she's gone out of her way to support great ball contraption, which was something Bill was really into um, as well as, you know, have some thoughts and ideas on how to dispose of his Lego. Uh, and it went to, um, a bunch of different places, but m mostly things that will ultimately end, end up helping kids. I, I know I got one of his sets. I know they gave away some special sets. One of the years at Brick World, I got the silver bucket, the special one. Uh, <laughs> they gave it to me the one year. I think maybe it was one of the years that um, – that was probably before I started to get – maybe before I got nominated, maybe 14 or 15 or something like that. We're passing out stuff so I got that. That was pretty cool. So that one is yeah. somewhere in my collection. I'm sure I do not uh, do anything uh, drastic with that one because that one definitely has more special meaning than a lot of the other sets that are out there. So, so yeah, let me tell you a little bit about that. Um, Bill had this had this idea that he would go around and if he saw something really interesting or uh, amazing to him that it had not been nominated or won he would want to do that for them anyway. So he would leave this little thing that would say WGB one through nine with a little note on the back telling people to come see Bill Bourne at the GBC area. And a lot of people were a little confused by the whole thing. And then they'd come over and he would present them with the set. And uh, so he started doing this quite some time ago and he was very discreet about it. And it kind of, nobody really knew what he was doing except me. <clears throat> um, but then as he started to get sick, he sent, he sent sets along and left it responsible for Jeremy and I, or somebody to go around and do that. 
because uh, there was a, a several brick worlds where he was still alive, but he was not able to come. And so yeah. he sent us with six sets. Make sure you go around and find cool stuff that has not gotten an, an award and make sure they get a set. And so that you were one of those, right? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, I did get one of those. Yes. Yep. I think that was. Um, uh, so you think it was 2014? Yeah, I'm not sure. Really. 14 or 15. I could probably go back and probably figure it out. But it was one of those years that, um, you know, probably one of those years. I mean, I got nominated in 16. So it would have been before that, most likely. I could, I could probably I could probably figure it out at some point. So, I mean, I might have notes somewhere. Um, I just don't have them handy. So I'd have to I'd have to go back and try and figure out um, what year it was. But I know I know I did get one. And I remember Jeremy, you know, handed it to me and. So it said it was what it was for and all that, so it was kind of cool. So. Was this for a version of um, an earlier version of your Hope Castle? Probably one of the versions. Obviously, Hope's been around since 2013 in different aspects. So it started with the small keep. And most of the original stuff is boxed up because it's been at the small parts of Hope Castle have been at most of the local Whistlug shows. The main castle, as you can see, is still kind of going through revisions for Brick World. Actually, Kathy just sent me an email uh, today about space requests because I'm registered, but she didn't get a space request for the castle. And so, but I'm with actually Whistlug this year, so I'll be right next to their pirate collaboration. And I'll be part of the castle collaboration, which is kind of cool. But so, yeah, pretty neat. Thanks. Let me interrupt with Tom again. No, well, I'm, uh, I think I'm done with that story. <laughs> okay. Well, is there, I mean, obviously we've heard, and you know, I've obviously, I pay attention a little bit to GBC also, uh, and Blaze in the chat, welcome Blaze. Uh, so it's one of those things where I've heard that, obviously it sounds like in Europe they actually broke the the GBC record that you guys had set at Brickworld, I think, a couple, year, a couple years ago. And supposedly it was an official one that I think Guinness was on hand for theirs. Um, yeah. Um, they've done a, a Guinness... Um, I think they originally got a Guinness thing because the Guinness was at the event for some other reason. And oh. they managed to pull them in and say, Hey, look, we have a record number of GPC modules. <laughs> um, and that's how uh, Miko got the record in the first place. And then for years, I've been playing catch up with him. Um, we've had this kind of friendly competition going on. Uh, and, you know, eventually, um, we pe we passed him, but then he passed us again a week later. And then <laughs> next year we passed him, and we held on to it for a few months, and then he passed us. And then and then the same thing happened. We passed him again, and then he eventually passed us. So right now, he owns the world record, the official Guinness world record. Chicago is beat before, but it's not official. Uh, but Mako's then um, beaten that, beaten us back. So this year, though, at Chicago, I know we're going to leave his record in the dust. Now, 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 now the question, I guess the question would be is now for that record, is it different modules or just any number of modules? Well, so far we've only done number of modules, but the. Um, we have discussed kind of very loosely that, you know, the, the idea of the workshop module where you have 50 copies of the same thing mm -hmm. is kind of getting old. And so we ought to be able to do unique modules, but then it gets kind of hard to tell. Is this one really different enough from this one? So mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to say what's a better way of doing it. So right now it's just purely the number of modules. Cool. Cool. Number of train controllers you have, and <laughs> yeah, actually, I've got a few of those. I might have to see if you guys need some of those. You guys always need more of those for GBC. Well, at, at Chicago, yes. <laughs> okay, I'll have to make a note to uh, to bring one. And actually, actually, I'm moving all my all my Lego has been in storage. I moved completely back to Wisconsin, and so I'm actually moving it into a larger storage. So I can get it organized and find everything because. I went and did to the show, and I'm like, where are all my extension cords for my PVC? And I'm like digging through bins 
this last weekend, I drove, dug through all 26 bins of loose brick and Ooh. found four of the extensions. Yeah, I got too much brick, guys. I really do. <laughs> I think a lot of us can uh, state that. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, that's cool. I mean, that's good because, I mean, obviously, with, you know, the only problem was be hopefully you wouldn't run on a table cloth. I mean, hopefully that would never be an issue. So. Well, so we will. <laughs> Um, it's that's definitely going to be an issue, and fortunately, both of the um, both of the big convention owners have trusted me carrying around a half a dozen of their carry cloth, and so on the at the two big events, I use the other guy's carry cloth, also. So, and even that, I think this year in Chicago, we're going to be we're going to have some trouble. Well, I mean. Maybe it's one of those things where, I mean, hopefully stuff like this, like a stream like this might help, you know, raise awareness to maybe if some of the, some of the fans want to, uh, you know, maybe help, you know, contribute to make, you know, GBC, you know, have, get more, you know, cloth, especially any of those people that have actually, like myself, who've maybe gotten a Bill Bourne award or, you know, have, have learned that GBC is one of those really cool things, you know, might be a way that we might be able to, you know, raise a little bit of money to get more of those cloths and, you know, stuff like that. So, because, I mean, that's, it makes it look so much better. I mean, those black cloths really, really attract, you know, a lot of attention with those, which is, which is nice. So, yeah. Well, that, that's, that, that's a possibility. I mean, um, these cloths were custom made. Uh, and, of course, we could get away with just having plain black terry claws they probably need to be i think these are at 36 inches 32 inches wide but eight feet long yeah um and but they have you know embroidered and the taped as they call it uh for the larger letters um but we don't need to have all that for you know yeah. the extra terry claws uh, just big and black yeah well that's good so let's actually, you know, kind of, I mean, let's kind of, you know, delve in because obviously I've actually built a couple modules in the workshops and, you know, we get to, we get to hear, you know, how well they do and all that stuff. But, you know, kind of tell us what makes a really good smooth running GVT module. <laughs> in, in, Wait, smooth in, running. You might not theory? be talking to the right guy. Uh, you want theory or practice? <laughs> So, <laughs> so here's the thing, right? So everybody gives me grief because I have a couple of modules that um, uh, are problems constantly. And so <laughs> Dave's trying not to laugh so hard over there. Um, and so, but, but what people forget is about my modules that they never have to touch. They never have to poke. They never have to play with because they just work. All the time, constantly, they work. But the problem is, the ones that just work are completely forgettable. They're boring, and oh, that's yeah. that's what it comes down to. You want something to work really well, it's got to be just dumb simple, and it's got to just, <laughs> and it will end up being reliable. You want something cool and splashy and fancy, it's it will be hard to make it reliable. So yeah. that that's the bottom line with GBC right there. <laughs> but now, like, well, what what makes an exciting module then? I mean, what makes it you know an exciting module to look at? I guess. Well, so there's several things that it big is definitely something that gets people's attention. Um, there's drawbacks to big, but that it, big is definitely something that that people will notice and kind of stare at. Um, other than that, it's just an interesting motion, uh, something that's n a motion that you don't see every day. Um, I'm trying to think of it. I, oh, I think uh, I think shooters shooters are very popular. Um, no. Actually, I need to step out for a second. I got to put this wine ass dog outside. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> G rated. G rated. Uh, well, that's good. Then we'll just put Dave on the big screen. You know, hopefully the light won't bounce too much off of his his head, his forehead there. But you know, 
Okay. I'm just no, I'm just giving you crap, Dave. You got that nice short haircut. I gotta I gotta cut mine a little bit. Yeah, mine's getting a little long, so because you're uh, right. Dave, you do a lot of GBC too, don't you? Uh I try. <laughs> um, but none of mine have made the uh they they get to the layouts, but um as far as that whole reliability thing, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, so I'm still learning a lot. My uh, more for, my forte is usually uh, carnival rides, and, and uh, that's that right. Stuff, where I don't need to uh, see those. So. Yeah, I don't need to worry too much about reliability, too too much, <laughs> as you well know. Um, but uh, it's the same thing, though. I it's what I like that attract people to the table. I, I want a lot of movement in, in my box. I want, um, you know, some some light, some flash, but basically uh, people like movement, animation. Um, you know, they can they can appreciate a, a static display, but personally I like to see a lot of movement in, in mocks and engineering and ingenuity and mechanics, you know. Have you, uh, have you do you have some nice uh, lighting options for some of your stuff for Brickworld, for like World of Lights and all that? I'm trying. One of the, uh, um, one of the uh, mocks I took with me to uh, Brookwood Indy and Brook Fair in North Carolina um, was uh, steampunk based. Um, cool. It was my version of uh, an old 80s cartoon called Battle of the Planets. Um, I made a version of the, uh, the Phoenix ship and that was uh, lit up with flames and um, LED strips and that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping just to uh, uh, have that more completed. Um, and uh, one, of the, one of the things that <clears throat> I had to do was, well, one thing, I had this, this thing for 10 years and they're just sitting there collecting dust. As a lot of us know what happens. So I wanted to take it out and after showing it, I I really need to make it modular so it's easier to transport because the thing yeah. weighs about ten pounds and it's hard to fit in a van. Um, so I, I ripped it all apart and and just re-engineering everything um, for modularity, ease of transport, and, and keep the same functionality I had. But um, what I found that people have begun using a lot are the LED strips, like the strip lighting. That uh, you find like in the back of um, that panel TVs, as you know, they're usually you have a remote control. You can switch between different colors. You can have some that do chasing or whatever. A lot of versatility, and the things are relatively cheap. So, like for a uh, six foot strand, you can get like under ten bucks. And for basic lighting and dioramas, it's great, great stuff. Yeah, yeah but it's not that. Lego. I'm gonna have to get some of that lighting because <clears throat> I've got a Gotham. I can show you guys. I got um, for Brickworld. This is what I'm working on, but it's a uh, here. Hold on, this stuff. But it's a portion of Gotham City. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So I got. I want to try to put lighting all in there. Yeah. Make it look. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll get some red up there. Like, yep. Where the Spider-Man web is for like an explosion or something. Yeah, they're um, I bought a set of uh, like under cabinet. Uh, LED lights, they're, they're round and oh, metal, okay. but you yeah. can, they're like a set of eight of them that you can connect to a hub, and they're all um, controlled with like an AC adapter and a remote control. You can have, on one of my mocks, I had like a, a destroyed building with uh, a couple of robots battling it out, and the lights I had underneath and showing it were just glowing red for like reactors and damage and that kind of stuff. Okay, that's cool. So, like, and that was like, you know, at most, maybe 25 bucks on Amazon. Oh, that's, that's um, cheap. Yeah, it's really reasonable compared to, you know, the specialized ones. Yeah. And like ambient lights, they're great. They, you know, they're just great. So, yeah, definitely. That would, yeah. That'd be great I'll, to see. I'll have to check Menards or something because I yeah. know that they got that stuff. Yeah. I wonder if Farm and Fleet would have that stuff. I don't know. I haven't checked, really. I, I get my stuff at, like, either Amazon or Home Depot or Lowe's. You can find it there, too. Okay. I'll have to check there. Thanks for that. You're welcome. So, Tom, uh, are, are, is there going to be some lighting stuff over in uh, GBC this year also, possibly? There is. <clears throat> um, 
Brian has used up the last of Kathy's money and bought a bunch of glow in the dark balls. Wait, Lego glow in the dark balls? Nope. Were you just giving me a hard time about non-Lego product and you're talking about non-Lego product? Am well, I that's correct? correct. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm happy <laughs> about it. It's <laughs> just <laughs> I thought this was a Lego stream. Yeah, that was called Parry Attack. <laughs> That's, that's okay. I'm sorry. Continue, Tom. Please continue. <laughs> hey, I'm purist. Doesn't mean that other people aren't. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay. They can go down their own path. I'll only give them a little grief. A little grief. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I give more, but you know. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're there is a bunch of balls. Um, I have seen the the same bunch of balls tested. Uh, in uh, North Carolina just recently, and yep. they look awesome. I am really looking forward to seeing how these things work out. Um, I know Brian has been working on uh, some charging stations and making it simple so you, you keep the balls charged by spreading out. You know, he's got these little strips of, I don't know, three or four LEDs and hooking a wire onto it. And if you put those, spread those around, then the balls stay charged up. Yeah, he's, oh, using, yeah. Um, he's using UV lights, right? Not just yes. light bright lights. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I mean, that, that'd be good because you're right. I mean, that's a huge display of GVC. And that you're right. In the dark, that would look really cool. So, yeah. So, the couple of guys did this in, um, well, really one guy set up a little display with this new ball, uh, this new plastic or whatever. Um, in North Carolina, Brick Fair, North Carolina, and they had a small loop, and it was incredible how how well these balls held the the light. So I I know it's gonna look awesome, and it, as mm -hmm. much as I'm a purist, I, I know I'm gonna like it. <laughs> the only thing that would maybe even make it cooler is because obviously the public doesn't see the get to see the dark stuff is almost have nope. some kind of a PVC pipe setup type thing with maybe some black cloth. You know, maybe kind of, you know, above and kind of behind or something where they maybe get a, a look at something like that, you know. That'd be kind of cool, you know. The problem with that way. is those are the modules that will break. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's just a tube, Tom. So why would it just break? <laughs> actually, just actually, those are the ones where you just do, you just put the plain and simple ones that, you know, will run forever right behind, right in front of that cloth. So, you know, even though, because they're not really going to care about the modules, they're going to care about the balls. I mean. It might just look, you know, you know, basic, but it'd be like, ooh, ooh, why are they, why are they lit, you know? So in Chicago, we're getting to the point where we have so many modules. Um, so last year, you remember how Brickworld is laid out? It's just all these <laughs> strips of tables, right? And, yeah. and they run, they run the entire length of the hall except for an open section right through the middle, right? So yeah. Last year, Brian gave me the longest strip that he's ever going to give anybody. <laughs> and and we filled it. And that's not enough. So this year, um, uh, apparently there was another train club that wanted a wider section. They wanted something that was three tables wide. Yeah. And so Brian has given me a three table wide and the longest he can ever make it, which is... <laughs> like 102 feet or something. And so the idea is that we'll have this huge space in the middle and we can place tables that jut into the middle area and run a loop of workshop modules into it. And so cool. that way we can get a lot more linear feet of modules. Um, so because otherwise we're just not going to be big enough, but if we had a separate little area where you just ran a bunch of glow in the dark balls and it was, you know, with tubes and uh, black cloth around it and black lights, you could still do that. And it would be a separate thing. Cool. So it, we're getting to the point where, yeah, GVC has got to be broken into two sections or eventually we're just going to round around the whole entire outside of the room. <laughs> that or it's going to be that's going to have to be like tiered tables. I know they're working with that a little bit in Whistler because we're just because of the space requirements that we need too. So I have to almost have like some tiered tables. Obviously, with these with these stepper modules, those actually might 
work for coming down and work out maybe or something like that. You know, it might be kind of cool to use something like that to get to a tiered setup too if you have to. You know. But, well, the um the the problem with tiered, and again, this is a problem with any time that you yeah. put the stream of balls out of reach, is those are the things that are going to break. <laughs> yeah, you're true. That's right. You know, even if you put the really reliable ones, that's when that motor will fail or that part that never came off before will find a way to come off. <laughs> yeah, but that, sh that should not stop anyone from trying to do it. <laughs> right? Oh, look, oh, look, look, look who's in the chat, gentlemen. We have someone in the chat. It's, it sounds like it's time for GBC Con. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hinkle himself. Oh, he makes an appearance <laughs> of sorts. Obviously, he's been listening. Obviously, because he's he's mentioning you know the fact that we need you know an actual GBC convention. So, you no, know, I I coined a term at Tom's place <laughs> during one of our, our club projects, which, which is sitting <laughs> here, and uh, that term was "you say it, you build it." So, in that spirit, Mr. Hinckley. Mr. Hinkle, sorry. Um, I think it's up to you to, uh, you know, organize and get that rolling. Don't you think? Who's with me? The problem is, is he's probably going to, you know, he'll probably do it when he moves back to Texas. So are you guys ready to drive down to Texas for a, a GBC con? <laughs> mm, depends where, I guess, in Texas. Uh, and what time of year in terms of how, how hot it's going to be? You know, just even just, you know, walking between the convention hall and the, and the hotel. No, no, it's got to be connected. It's got to be connected. <laughs> I'm not stupid. It's got to well, be. Well, I mean, I do do Virginia in August, so it can't be that much hotter and moister. Yeah, it can. <laughs> uh, yeah, he says it'll be in the best part of Texas. So, you know. Well, the best part oh, is that because that's where he's from. Yeah, it'll be like five minutes from his home or something like that. <laughs> We know you, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, we still love you for some reason. <laughs> Rick Somniac saying, come to Miami. Well, Rick World was down in that area at one time. Where was it? Tampa, I think, the one year? Yep. Two, more than one year. Oh. That's, that's moist. <laughs> Uh, it was um, early fall, though, so it wasn't, wasn't too, bad. too bad. So I take it, Tom, you'll be driving again this year, most likely? Oh, yeah. I have too much stuff to bring to not drive. That's why I joked. I joked with uh, Kevin. I said, you just need to you need to find someone who's driving that long distance to take some of your – take your really cool mock with you, you know? Yeah, it's um, 10 bucks a pound per mile. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Uh I don't think he's gonna pay that. Not not unless he not unless he, you know, I don't know, hits the lottery or something. I kinda that's what I'm kinda hoping for. I need to be able to buy one million one by two uh translucent clear plates. So you know, you know, about the only way I'd be able to do that. So <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll have to I'll have to figure out how to, you know, maybe uh We'll have to figure out a way to get the GBC to kind of get up and over and into like the castle. May have to start building it at an angle or something so it can roll down the walls or something. You know, take out a few ice bears as it does that. Ooh! So you need you know siege weapons to toss balls into the castle and then the castle feeds them back out somewhere. Ooh! 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 That could be interesting. You say it. You build it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to work on that. That or just that or just yeah. Somehow I have to just kind of roll. You know, they roll into the castle and then just siege them back, send them flying back into the GBC area. There you go. No. As, long, Artillery. As, as long as it meets specs, it should be fine. As long as it doesn't hurt, does not, hits nobody in the eye, I guess, is, you know, don't poke any eyes out. No, that's fine. It just has to do one <laughs> per second. They're not, outrageous. They're not outrageous standards, so um, I think uh, throughput has to be one ball per second. Right, Tom? You want to like One ball that. per second, or up to a batch of 30 hmm. every 30 seconds. 
Interesting, interesting. I'll have to work on that. I'll have to, you know, I'll have to work on that. That's 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 a project. You know, I guess once I get kind of get this done, I guess I can probably maybe do that. I'm working on working on elevation changes right now. So, nice. like some ele elevated walls, because because uh, the problem is, is my uh, now the moat can my moat completely goes around the castle. So, need to be able to get lighting into the center of the castle area. So. Are those uh, one by six by five purple panels? They are. They were part of. Uh, they were part of Lug Bulk. Yeah. Uh, one year, and I actually ordered a bunch of them, and then I still had to order more. So, yeah. Yeah. Actually, what I put on Lug Bulk this last year was, you know, something pretty much as cool. Uh, one by two by three purple. Ooh. Same shade. Same shade, trans purple, yeah. Purple is my favorite color. So now that trans purple it is that much better. So mm -hmm. maybe trans purple one by two clear plate. Man, I might go out I might I might have to file for bankruptcy at that point. So Yeah, yeah that we'll see. Is that a Q element at this point? I don't know. I don't think it even exists, but if they've made a one by one and a one by two trans purple plate. My castle could get some really, really colorful uh, effects to it. So, right, like, are you still in contact with uh, that person who did stuff for you? <laughs> oh, oh, the one that did the uh, the stuff. The you know, the uh, I mean the uh, altering of the bricks. Um, the texturing. Yeah, be, uh, I don't want to like yeah. give Tom a heart attack or anything, but. Yeah. Um, oh well, you know. Or actually, where he, where, yeah, where he did the oh, you know, I know what you're talking about. Where he uh, put the he put the masonry prints on the uh, bricks. Yeah. Yeah. I've talked yeah, to him in a while. Talked to him a while. Oh, you know what? What's wild is here you go. I've got the bag right here. Uh, <laughs> I'll try not to show anything. It's going to really upset Tom. Actually, here we we'll go. These are the best. This no, is no, the easiest thing to get on. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. He took he took some one by six by fives and voila. Nice. Oh, so isn't that nice? That's pretty cool. That is now, cool. It, it's actually a Lego brick. He just basically just he just engraved it. So basically, so he just has a you know, so he just basically did that. But he did that with some trans purple, some trans black, trans clear. I had him do a bunch of that stuff. It was like a one by six by five. Now he also did. This is like the standard like Lego, Lego pattern, but uh, he also did his own patterns. He did like a, a stretcher bond, a header bond, a Flemish bond, English cross bond. Yeah, so he did a bunch of different stuff. So yeah, so he did his own, which was kind of cool too. So nice. But oh yeah, I've used a few of them. Uh, they were used in some stuff, and I think I actually took those modules apart. They might make an appearance again at some point. But uh, that's cool. So, so Dave, you 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 have you're building some more car. Are you have new carnival rides this year, or? Um, like I said, I've been trying to focus on the uh, the steampunk monster. Um, oh, okay. Like, uh, I'll probably try and convert some of the uh, the existing rides I have to a more steampunk theme. Maybe put some Victorian risers on them, that kind of stuff. Um, because I would like to to have it somewhat integrated in theme and not just standing out like really stark different um but uh as far as new rides uh, we'll see <laughs> we'll see i asked i only asked for two uh tables double deep um so uh the dragon will the dragon train will make an appearance and it'll be undulating here and there which will be nice so we'll, we'll see what we can do so, so, Tom, who usually rides with you? Who, who are you taking this year? Dave. <laughs> you, Dave? Cool. Yeah, it's amazing we're still friends. So, <laughs> so Tom, what's this uh, What's this gathering tomorrow? Is that a, a knee lug meeting then, probably? What For when? Tomorrow. Didn't you say you were having oh. like oh. people over? <laughs> um, I, yeah, Dave, you'll have to turn your camera around and show. Okay. Uh, Not too closely. I don't Just think a I, quick I, glance. I can't do it closely because the laptop's a little heavy. 
right. So um, it's a set draft, and we have 149 sets that have all been built once and then taken apart and put back in the box. And uh, we're having 14 people participate in the draft, and they're all arriving at noon tomorrow. So I've been cleaning the house off and on all day. Yeah, I don't know. That, <laughs> that looks like fun. Are those more of the uh, the born, born stuff? No, this is a different opportunity that I came across and have, have spread the love amongst my club members. Wow, he's really coming in the room now. Hopefully you're presentable if he, if he shows you. I don't know if you guys can see it. So that's an eight-foot table. Wow, look at that. Oh, some trains. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. Which Batman set was that at the bottom? Uh, that's uh, the Joker. Oh, the Joker man. The big one. I have that one. It's. Uh, I, I have it. Oh, yeah, that's that. pretty good. Right that. there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hundred and forty nine sets. This thing. Wow. You're getting Ooh, into too much thing. detail now. Not a fan of that set. Oh, you don't want you don't want everybody to know for the ones that are maybe coming tomorrow to know what, what it all is or what? <laughs> I don't care about that, but uh, the the Bestman playset I was really not that impressed with. <laughs> now, there's some good stuff there though. That's cool. That's good. Yeah, actually, what's because uh, we're we're obviously doing our Brick World stream because I don't think either, neither one of you guys is going to Philly Brick Fest, are you? No, don't get me started. Okay, that's fine. I won't get you started. But that's where I mean that for the guys that Kevin hooked me up with a lot of those guys, even like Kevin, they're get they're getting all hyped for Philly Brick Fest, which is next week, next week, and so they're all going to that. So I mean, um, you know, so uh, basically. Uh, I watch the hauling and balling group on Sundays. I mean, they got a great show. They go through the Lego news. They do stuff. I actually won one of their guessing contests a couple weeks ago. Nice. Their guess poop, where they got a guy hidden in a porta potty. You got to guess who it is. <laughs> so, like, this, is this, this one's going to go for a while. This one, this one's probably not going to count. And like, probably literally like two, three minutes in, I guessed it. And they're like, and they're like, wait, wait, is that, is that, well, wait, is that the, is it a proper name? Oh, that's his. Well, and then they were all saying they had money on someone else. I'm like, wow, God, I guess I had my money on uh, Pope Castle. And I was kind of like shocked. They're like, really? Wow, okay. Because I have my I have my ways of looking because it's generally a CMF. So I have my ways of kind of trying to guess. But the problem with guessing is you time out. And so it's one of those things where if you guess too much too fast, it's like you've been timed out. You're like, oh, you're like, oh, okay, I got to sit here for like, 10, 15 seconds and wait. And then what am I typing? And so it's kind of funny, actually. It's uh, it's cool. So I want some poly bags. So they do like either like a, a, a known sets or they have like a box. They have three different boxes. Do you want what's in box number one, box number two, or box number three? It's kind of like, uh, what was that, deal, uh, deal or no deal type kind of thing? <laughs> cool. Behind door number two. <laughs> you know, it's a zonk and it's like yeah they do have the zonk type stuff in one of their boxes so you gotta who is uh, this again huh who is this again this is uh hauling and balling so they do sundays at i believe it's 6 p.m central something like that so they do a show they are actually on like oh i don't even know what show they're on 200 plus they've been doing this for three or four years so yeah they actually um i mean the they're yeah, they're trying to get to a thousand uh, subscribers by Philly. They were going to give away a big set. Iceberg Bricks, another one. Uh, Brick Blaze, who was in the thing, he's also giving away some stuff. If he gets to a thousand, uh, I mean, I guess for me, I mean, I'll take whatever subscribers I get. I mean, my goal is to stream live uh, from Brick World, and of course Friday night. I didn't do it last year because obviously Friday night falls on charity auction night, so I need to get my setup up onto a cart and i'm gonna go up there and try and stream from the uh the auction area so i can be there for when the when the munchkin seats go on sale my hand goes up and stays up and never comes down so i gotta start selling some lego sets so i have the money to pay for my seat this year because there's rumors that steve jackson might be here it might be at brick world this year so yeah i think he's uh, been in a year or two has he no uh, i think he'll uh 
I think he said uh, um, up oh, Doc's in the chat. Uh, the one year Guy Himber overbooked him, and then last year he overbooked himself. And so uh, basically, we're hoping he's gonna be here. But like Guy said, uh, and he's actually he's working with someone else now. He's actually moved to a different game company. But him and Steve are still good friends. And he was on last week. I had Guy on uh, hype show number two, and Brian was on show number one. So trying to get some of the people on that I know. I was trying to get. Uh, I think I even emailed Jeremy Moody. Um, I emailed uh, or messaged uh, Simon. And I mean, it's one of those things I'm hoping I can solidify a couple of these people who thought that they weren't going to be as exciting or they maybe have had like the issues with streaming, kind of like what Dave has experienced a couple times yeah. on my streams. You know, he's looking great today. So obviously, the internet there, at Tom, at your house is probably maybe better than what he's got at his house, I guess, possibly. So, yep. <laughs> there, there are some benefits of uh, not living in the city. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, oh for like the amount of bandwidth that people use. I, I don't know. I'm in the city, but I'll, I'll steal it all. That's okay. Nobody, nobody around me needs it. That's fine. I'll take it. I'll steal it. <laughs> You'll use it, right? I'll, I'll figure out a way to use it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'm the one that I'm the guy that kind of researched this X split. So when I was streaming with some of these other guys, I had the two, three cameras are like, what's Reed's like raise, raising the bar on this, what's going on? I go, well, you know, it's nice because you can see me, but you can see the castle. So, you know, on streams where I'm not the host and I'm actually doing more building and stuff, I can get down there and crawl around. And I did that on a Saturday night Lego one night, and they're like, oh, my gosh, is that how big the castle is? I'm like, yeah. And I actually have new business cards, and my new business card actually has my – I got uh, Kristen Olson. She has a uh, – Photographer, photography studio out in Denver, and I, I uh, can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but she she went to the St. Baldrick's uh, shaving events that I went to, and so she wanted to take pictures of the castle for me, so I set it up my old my old job upstairs uh, one day, and she came up and took, you know, professional pictures, and so I got one where I'm laying behind it, so you can kind of see me laying behind the castle so you can get a sense of scale, so, but... You know, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty cool. So, but yeah, I mean, it's always working. This is, I was joking earlier, this is kind of what I found in the wild, the one of the new Lego 2 movie sets. So hmm. I'm looking forward to building this sucker. So nice. there's lots of trans blue nice. fields on there. So nice. See, Tom, I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to not to spend very much. I mean, like I said, if you saw, you saw my storage. You guys would pre pretty much croak in terms of how much is in there. Let's see if I can. I'll take a picture of what I've got. Um, so this is kind of this is going to be this is going to be the new setup. So you can kind of look. This, the, the the shelves are sitting in the back there on the ground. Is gonna they're going to just be up on you know like normal. And I got some tubs there. You know so there's there's from the doorway. There's like all the tubs. So I got you know, ten of the twenty seven gallon and like probably. 16 of the 17 gallon tub so so yeah, it's like about how much i can p fit in my van <laughs> but you know what wow this is this is what's left in the other stores that i'm moving from and if you look on the one side on the on the side where the u-haul boxes are those are sealed set i got 52 boxes 52 large u-haul boxes i think i counted about 1500 sealed sets so yeah I'm, you know i'm kind of i'm sick I'm sick. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you're not the only one on this call that has a problem. <laughs> we haven't started. We haven't started. You know, a full anonymous. You know, a full anonymous. Yet, you know, for people. So, but uh, <laughs> yes. Well, hi, my name is Tom Atkinson. I'm a, a Lego addict. Yeah. Uh, you know that's uh, now canon, right? Because this is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it's and it's one of those things where it's 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 you know I mean it's one of those things where I mean you look at the castle and you look at my stuff. My mom freaked out because I've actually got here. Let me see if I can see if I can let me turn let me see if the camera will spin. Let's see if it will go up. Make sure I've got a bunch of bins over there. Cool. So get, those, those are all the, those are all the bins for just the castle. And she had a heart attack. She saw those. She's like, oh, so you're gonna move some of this out of here? I'm like, yeah, probably. When I get the storage organized, I can get some of those out of there. Well, the thing is, though, too, is 
Chicago's a couple months away. Once the castle's done and I have all the renovations done for this year, chances are I won't even need to bring it back here and set it up. The only reason it's set up is because the full moat needed a full shift. And the only reason I couldn't keep the town on the ex existing plates that I had was because I was off by two studs. Oh. <laughs> oh. I was like, yeah, two studs because I set up the, the gate, the, the gatehouse, and I'm like, oh, I'm two studs. <laughs> So, but the keep had to get recentered. So the keep is recentered, which will be nice. Um, both stairs are done. Both staircases are done. Um, so it's, it's I'm, I'm changing some stuff. If you look, there's some texturing stuff there on that one corner over there that needs to be done. So it flows more freely into the walls. Um, but what had happened was I kind of, uh, yeah, here, here's Hinkle. I don't have a problem. These are life choices, and I can quit anytime I want. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kevin. Um, so, do you still have that set uh, from what last year that you were pressured into getting from your peers, and that you didn't tell your wife about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, it, I was helping him price his his stuff for Philly. Um, his his uh, highest priced item is in that four grand mark, and, mm. the, and the cheapest one I think was like ten bucks. So, yeah. But I mean, it's it's like literally, it's like you know, I mean, it's he's got a crap load going. But like he was joking, is he's kind of he's kind of everybody's you know like cheap ass bricks is giving him crap because he's bringing all kinds of like Ziploc bag, you know, used sets and stuff, and then Kevin's got all these. You know all these sealed sets that he's bringing but that's like me too i mean i got tons of but i work we both work for lego so we got discounts so i mean i mean we we had you know i mean if you hear his stories when he first started working for lego you know as a poor college student married you know kid i mean he could i mean and I, if you think of me when i first started buying lego i did cable I was making good money and i bought tons of it when i started working for lego i had that same issue i was like man i took that Twenty thousand dollar a year pay cut, and I'm like, oh, and all this good stuff's out there. I mean, you know, that's why you waited for it to go on sale. And so, you know, it's good stuff. So, yeah. <clears throat> Reed, are you going to that Star Wars thing on the fourth? Uh, may the May the fourth. Yeah, I am actually, I'm, and actually, that's my birthday too. So it'll be a, a double a double cool thing. So yeah, I'm taking the the trench. I need to build some snow stuff, but I mean, I have. To, I have snow speeders. I built the uh, built the snow speeder from the new twentieth set last night. Yeah, I it's have. I these... have that too. It's in this box right there. Yeah, it's got these boring Star Wars guys in it. This one is a much better snow speeder. Notice the pilots in it. They are so much better. <laughs> for the snow speeder. I like that. That's really creative. <laughs> How you put your own people in there? Yeah, I bought uh, three too. sets at uh, Walmart a while ago. But I yeah. don't know if I'm gonna open this one yet. But I'm definitely opening up one of these. Oh, that one? This that's this one right here. I actually opened it last night. So I built the small snow speeder before moving on to the big snow speeder, which like I yeah. said, I mean really they, they look pretty much the same. I don't think there's much difference in them. Oh they're yeah. pretty close. Yeah, I pretty have, close. Uh, the, this is the new slave one. Yeah. I so. took the figures out of it, but I just kinda wanted the ship. Yeah, I have I have a lot of snow speeders. I have I have a snow base, so I mean ice castle. I need That's good cool. modes of defenses. So yeah, I've got a so couple cool. of speeders in there too, just the rebel people. That yeah, I might bring so that I, box actually. Just take some stuff out of it because it's got a little car in there. I, I, this was actually, um, because when I registered, well, not registered, but like when I went to Brickwall as an attendee the first year. I got the brick loot box, and this is was from AFAL Man. If you guys know who that is, brick loot, yeah. uh, this was like the little free thing that I got out of the brick loot box. And is it real car. Lego? Yeah, this is actual Lego. <laughs> you were wondering, it it is actual Lego. Like I got some, I got some. I've been building trees lately too, so I've been building some nice. Uh, Don't know how ice, can show up. Ice trees for the for the uh, the show. There's one tree back there. It looks pretty realistic. Oh my gosh, is that real? <laughs> that's a that's a uh, plastic tree. There's one behind me too. That's where Chester used to hang out before I exiled him to his own building table here on the on my tail building table. So, <laughs> so. 
Speaking of Tristan, do you uh, like regularly wash him at all? Oh, here we go. Here, uh, <laughs> do I what? Do I wash him? Yeah, uh, maybe occasionally. Uh -huh. So here's that new business. Here's that new business card. So here, let me. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's that's the one with the picture of me and the castle in it. So nice. Cool. And then it's got it's got the new keep with initials. But the new change this year is not only do I have the names on the top, they're actually going to be in the walls too. So. Are you yeah. lighting your, your remote this year too? Are you? Am I what? Lighting it. I then you think... then you then you light your moat. Uh, the moat was lit once. I don't know if it'll be lit this year. I mean, maybe if I if I can build some stuff. Um, Pasta was saying I need to build a GBC call it the Scoop Shovel. Uh, actually, so everybody knows that is my bowling nickname, Scoop Shovel. I've had it since 1994. It'll actually be on my sig fig when I get that made. I'll have probably a picture of the castle on the front, and the nickname reads Scoop Shovel Jaeger on the back. So, what? <laughs> along with uh, I wear I wear a I wear a a Bucky Badger hat uh, for work, uh, but I'll actually get, I think I'm gonna make a ball cap one of that, uh, put on my sig fig. I actually, because the company I work for actually had that that. Bucky Badger logo before the University of Wisconsin had it, so kind of fun. So, <sighs> so I need the one that's more like L and L, so I don't get in trouble for replicating it for Sig Fig and stuff like that. So I'll probably have a ball cap with that, and then the torso. Probably get a pants like a khaki with uh, maybe a cell phone kind of because I have the I have the the what do you call it? These the Dickies that have the cell phone pocket. So I love those. So, but. Yeah, I have my sig fig. I know I've shown it a couple of times. Hold on, let me see. Let's see. Um, do you have a sig fig? No. This is I, uh, got to get oh, that yeah. white yeah. hair piece, and you know, pretty much done. I got to change the hair, but it, I think it looks like me. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say. I mean, Tom, we've got that. We've got the old guy, you know, sculpt type thing. You know, I mean, we might, we might need that. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't think I'm that there bad quite yet. <laughs> there you go. Right there. There you go. That works. Oh yeah, that's right. But I mean, yeah. But we could, you know, that's what we need. We need, you know, we actually just need. They need them to make kind of like a, need a curved tile. You know, it doesn't have too much extra on it. That's just maybe white. You know. We'll do that. <laughs> Thinning hair. Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, they have uh, Santa mini figs, so you yeah, should be on set, Tom. John and Joan have some. Oh, my mom's. My mom's. Uh, you know, tempting me with donuts. Mm. Testing mm. or tempting. tempting? I'll take them back upstairs if you want. No. Or actually, is that, is that Yeah, I'll take that one upstairs. Which anyway, one? This one? Anyway, you want donut with sprinkles? I can try and send it to you guys. Yeah, I'll <laughs> take a bite of that. Just do a uh, just do a uh, whole, whole castle mukbang. Yeah, I can see if I can send it through the camera. I don't know if I can guarantee anything. You know. Oh man, <laughs> that was wrong. I don't. I, I'm sorry. Well, actually, what's funny is uh, we actually joke, and Kevin actually, Kevin actually got a present from me for his trip to Philly. Uh, but he's actually sent me some stuff over time. I sent him some Bucky Badger popcorn, you know. So I sent him, I sent him some cheese popcorn, and that, he talked about that in the last stream, and it, he refused to talk about how fast he ate it. Uh, this is a caramel cheese popcorn. It's called Overload. So it's like caramel corn and cheese popcorn. So I told him to beware of this stuff. I actually that's what I that's how much I ate last night. So I you know I ate pretty much most of the bag. So pretty bad. So for a minute there I thought you were uh, gonna show like cheese curds or something. Well, I need to send some to him. Uh, that has that hasn't been mailed out yet. At some point I'll do that. I do I do I can do because that's the company I work for. We do the snacks, we do the cheese curds, the cheese, all that stuff. So. Uh, nice. Rick twenty five is in the chat. Kevin Wagner's in the chat. Yeah, I'm a snack enabler. So I mean, it's one of those things where <laughs> you Brick World. Actually, what's funny for Brick World is, um, did anybody? How many people? I don't know if anybody bought that shirt that uh, Kevin did. He did the shirt that was the the uh, nine volt revolt as part of that shirt series he does. Actually, well, I picked that shirt up, and actually, I found something shortly after I got the shirt because I. I drive on my route and I see stuff and I was like, Hey Kevin, I think I found your secret inspiration for that shirt. I found, I found this on the, 
Hammer Rebel Lager beer. I was like, hmm, that must be that must be what he used for inspiration because here is his shirt and it looks pretty remarkably close like uh, his. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. So I don't I don't remember seeing that one at all. Yeah, that's what's one of the new ones actually. Uh, it's actually got it back here. So it's you know it's the one of the shirts from his subscription. Um, oh, cool. And so basically, I got. I got the last one. I just basically signed up. It's twenty one dollars. Just takes it out. I mean, to me, it's one of those things where I just figured I would just do the subscription service, get some neat t shirts. I might, you know, obviously I'm wearing wearing an old club t shirt now, the you know General Grievous. So because I did, I worked at the store long enough. So <laughs> I'll bring snacks when I come to Brick World. You know, the problem is with the cheese popcorn, your hands will get orange yeah. just orange i mean it's gonna be one of those things where you don't want to do that and then kind of do what you know the stuff i am right here so i put the donut to the side because i'll get all sticky i really don't want to do that so but yeah so tom you you know so you guys will fill now do you do you just drive a vehicle or do you have a trailer too that you bring oh just a van just a van yeah a minivan so it oh, gets yeah. pretty full going out to chicago because i i end up bringing out <clears throat> not just Dave and his stuff, but um, Jeremy and Benjamin Moody. Um, whatever things they're sending out usually end up going with me too. And they oh, fly and they'll, in, so and they'll yeah. just fly. They just fly yeah. out or what? Yep. Yeah, they're spoiled. Yes, they are. Yeah, I mean it's kind of things where it it happens, you know. I, I mean, I actually, uh, I have. Uh, I haven't done try. I haven't done a stop motion. Actually, I did a little one. But I'll do a bigger one. You guys don't want to know what I want to do with the castle one. I mean, that would be quite humorous. I can kind of, I can say it because obviously I can't use it for one of the streams because I'll be using a, a copyrighted song. But I was thinking of doing the old because uh, I'm from Wisconsin. Do the jump around with the ice bears <laughs> on the castle. So <laughs> if you can, if you can think of me reconfiguring 600 ice bears for a four minute long song, that's going to be going to be pretty excessive. Pretty excessive. So. Um, yeah, yeah, I've been trying some stuff with stop motion. It's pretty cool. Oh, pretty cool. So that's good. I mean, yeah, and that's why Kevin Kevin doesn't really have much to bring to Chicago. So just ship that one to me. I'll, I'll, you know, I can, you know, you can just tell me how to rebuild it. You know, over the course of you know, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever, you know. But uh, I don't know what he's bringing. He might not be bringing too much. But um, well, is Kevin planning on flying out too? Yeah, he, he's coming. Yep, he's coming. Uh, my roommates as of right now are still, uh, Matthew K and Tommy Armstrong with the last, uh, couple last year. So, uh, it's always nice to have roommates, you know, I mean, cause we stay right there. Tommy wants to be right there because I didn't book early this year and actually what's crap. I got a call. I think I actually have a room I need to cancel. So I think I ended up, I couldn't get the room I wanted. So if there's anybody who still needs a room. I have a king size bed that I need to cancel. It's part of that block. So I gotta be that quick because everybody's going to probably start needing that so um but i couldn't get the one i wanted they put more doubles doubles in there so i put i, I did that so but it's one of those things where i like on site too myself i mean i like being right there i mean i'm gonna work late and you know i'm sleeping on the couch slash couch i think it's couch and table so my feet or my head will be on the table and the rest of me will be on the couch so, but, but actually, my van, my van actually, I actually hit a, I hit a post in February. So they're actually, they're actually totaling my van out. So I need to decide if I'm going to try and keep it and make it work or get a new one. So I might be trying to get a new van here before uh, Chicago. So does this really, uh, it work? Huh? Does it what? work? Yeah, it works. I mean, I just basically dented the door. I mean, but. But because it's so old, it's an 04 Safari okay. with 265,000 miles on it. Uh, the value was, uh, you know, too, you know, far less than the damage. So they just they were gonna they were gonna total it. So I'm like, okay, so might get like a Grand Voyager because it's got the nice seats that'll do the full fold away, and then I still have a nice van to drive when I'm out there. So you know, because I mean. I'm guessing when you fill yours up, you've got seating for you and Dave, and the rest is all wide open for sets and stuff, right? So yeah, that's the from. normal state of the van. It's just the front, the driver mm -hmm. and the passenger, and the rest of it's just open. <laughs> well, see, and it, for me, that would be good if I had the ones with the total, you know, the, the Grand Caravans have the full away. So if I basically did that, full flip down, throw my stuff in there, drive down there, and then I get down there, unload it all, then I can 
be back up to seven person seating where I can drive people around. I mean, it's always nice to have that ability, you know, for the people who fly in, like you said, Jeremy's flying, Kevin's flying. I mean, I know a lot of people who fly. I mean, so if they're flying, they get there and they need, you know, to drive around or whatnot. I mean, that, I mean, that's what I've been, I've been kind of an unofficial taxi for the last couple of years, which is always nice. I like that, I like that ability. People always like to be able to go do stuff. We go to the mall, we go wherever. So And meals. It's all about meals. Yeah. Well, in my van, I can open up the back seats, so I don't. It isn't completely stuck with just two when I after I empty it. Um, okay. You can get two comfortably and three uncomfortably sitting in the back. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, and that's and that's the goal. I mean, it's one of those things where I mean, I've already made the trip to Brick Fair, New England. That last year they did it out there, yep. um, and so I did that, and I rented a vehicle. I think I rented a. It was either a you had a town and country van, or, didn't you? No, he had a uh, Pacifica. Oh, was that what I had? Yeah, it's something like that. I rented something that year, so yeah. yeah. I mean, well, things for those long trips. I rented. I rented a Forerunner for Seattle. That was that was terrible. I rented a truck for Brick World the one year because the vans were too expensive. Um, so I mean, I've I've had my share of vehicles. That's why all the stuffs in tubs because the truck, the boxes from the uh, lug bulk were nice and everything fit nicely, but they were cardboard i mean they would have gotten soaked because i did go through a couple rainstorms on that on that drive so but uh they're in tubs i mean i'm i'm hoping i can get my dad to fix his uh shop smith so i can make some wooden boxes here in the next year so i can have a little bit more custom or modular a little bit more less space so if i go to a big show and people want to send stuff i can i can i have more room i mean i did go to a show in beloit and between my stuff and what his stuff was we actually fitted it in the van with the other seat in there, so it's nice to have. So the cool. Safari is a, a pickup truck. Uh, the Safari is an all-wheel drive van. Okay. So it's a so it's it's a neat van. I mean, I've had it for I did I did four to five years of cable installs. That's where probably two hundred thousand of those miles came from. So I beat up the inside a little bit, so the the driver's side door is all kind of. The inside's all worn and stuff where my where my elbow sat all the time and stuff. So it's it's getting there, but it's still in great shape for the most part outside. And like the guy looked underneath when I went to a place the other day, and he's like, Wow, the underside looks really good. Probably ninety you know, ninety percent better than most of the cars in Wisconsin because of the amount of salt and stuff, but Yeah. Just keep driving there for a while, it'll change. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's been here since October, so it's one thing. Well, I, I, it might be gone anyways. I might be getting rid of it. So, right. but it's, it's, it, it, it did what it needed to do. I mean, I took the seats out a lot for work, so, you know, and for shows. I mean, the seats wouldn't be in there. I mean, they're all be seating for the driver and a passenger for most of the time. Um, actually, for a while, I guess I did have the front bench seat, and I could fold it down, and I had a deck, and so. I could stack stuff and still lay in the back. That was the goal on the long trip. Be able to go back in the back and crash. So. There you go. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Kevin's talking about the honeymoon suite. Uh, yeah, I I don't know who I'd be, who my honey, who my honey would be that I'd be sharing that honeymoon suite with. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping she's into Lego. Otherwise, it's not going to work very well. So. <laughs> otherwise, she won't be your honey. Probably not. I mean, I, but I mean, I probably need someone who sorts their Lego differently so that, you know, we can tell that it's not who's is who's, you know, by the way it's sorted. You know? <laughs> then I'd be set, but you know, I've, I've got my, I've got a favorite out there, but I think she's seen somebody these days. She's kind of one of my routes. So, but um, she's a little kid. So, you know, the kid's kind of into the Lego. That's kind of a nice thing, you know? So. Actually, it was funny. She actually did say she, by me talking about the castle and stuff, she did ask her son why he, Hasn't been building as much lately, so kind of cool. But you know, so but yeah, so it's kind of cool. So I'm looking forward to Brickworld. You know, at the time, do you have any building you're still working on? Any mock creations, or you? No, I just had too much other crazy crap going on um, between work and uh, we did a big thing here where my house is still recovering from. Uh, back in February, we did a big quarry. I don't know whether Dave has talked about this at all, um, <clears throat> but uh, there was basically three of us that built this thing in my house, and then we took it to a train show. And it's a was it eight by twelve base plate, 
um, yeah. with with large vehicles run by EV3s communicating to each other. So there was a shovel uh, that would pick up coal and then dump it into a dump truck that would back up and dump it over the edge. And then a, a bulldozer would push it into the bottom of a conveyor that would bring it back up so it could loop around again. Wow. That's and how big was that? Eight by eight by what? Eight by 12 base plates. That's not even eight wide down there. That's six wide for anybody who's curious to be another two wide for eight. That's about, yeah. that's about 10 right now long. So it's about lengthwise. It's about, about 10. I think it's 10 watt length that way, but so. Yeah. So it was big. It's big. It still is big. It's in my house. <laughs> At least most of it, but it's in boxes now, which is a vast improvement over what it was. That was one of the things, um, Dave helped me finish up tonight uh, when he got or this afternoon when he got up here uh, because of all these people are descending upon my house tomorrow. So <laughs> yeah, needed more space. <laughs> so is that is that something that you're bringing to maybe possibly Chicago then? No, 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 no way. It's <laughs> that would take a whole nother van. Um, <laughs> it really would. Uh, and and so we did this at a show in February and we plan to do it again in November. Uh, but there's a lot of work to still be done. And it was kind of, there was a lot of last minute hacking and throwing things together and building way too many hours in a row just before that event. Um, so, you know, like I said, my house is still recovering from that. <laughs> there's, there's a pile that, uh, tomorrow morning I'm going to have to deal with in, in my Lego room that has a box with some miscellaneous parts in it and some bags that need to be put away and all this kind of other stuff. You know, it's still hanging around. Yeah. Um, so I haven't, I haven't done any GBC type work in a while. Years. Okay. Years. Maybe a decade. <laughs> it has not been a decade. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, like you said, your goal is to, as as probably coordinator of that GVC area, is just to make sure everybody brings smooth running modules and exciting modules to your uh, to your setup, so you can, you know, don't give him an out, <laughs> and hopefully have people that actually help man it. Now, the nice thing about this year is, is this year since I'm part of a collaboration, I might be able to actually step away and actually spend a little bit of time in the GVC area. That would be kind of cool. Well, nice. That is the best way to learn about GBC is to hang out behind, uh, inside, chasing balls, fixing modules, because you observing other people's modules fail and jam is the best learning experience. Um, <laughs> even, you know, watching your own modules break and fail is a good learning experience. Um, yeah, I, I've seen, I've, I've got one that just for some reason has a weird, it's, it's Brian's, it just for some reason it just has a weird twitch. When it's scooping the balls, there's a twitch, and I'm looking at it going, okay, well, the, the plate looks fine. The the feet picking it up look fine. Just for some reason, it's just a weird twitch. I don't know. Maybe I've got a, a gear that maybe has just a bad tooth or something. It just twitches. It just has a little twitch every time, and it's funny. So Bring it. Bring it with you. Yep, we'll figure oh, out I'll what's be, wrong I'll with it. I'll, I'll be bringing all five. I'll bring in all five, and I'll bring my controllers and my extension cables and all that. So I'll bring, I'll bring okay. them. Well, because especially with that with that one with the I need to just find a black light flashlight so I can just kind of walk over there during world lights and if I can get away from my area, but I still need to see what I'm doing for lighting. I was gonna change the lighting. I don't know if it'll happen this year. It depends on how many Lego sets I can sell between now and Chicago. And then uh, also uh, I need to I need a new party rocker. So I gave my party rocker to one of the guys in Denmark when I left town. So I need a new uh, a new jamming speaker, so I'll be a new one. <laughs> hey, Reed. Yeah. What type of sets are you selling? Uh -oh. oh, trust me. When I get ready to, to do it all, it'll be in the uh, – I might have to have them create a whole special chat for me in the Slack for the Whistlug, so. Trust yeah, because I'm kind of interested in if you've got anything because I'm looking for, like – there's a couple sets that I'm in need of because I'm, like, I'm looking for the old – I'm not sure if you're gonna have any, but the 2006 uh, Batman stuff. I'll look and see. I mean, I know I have an old one from back then, but it's probably gonna be a little set like this for a couple hundred bucks that no one's gonna want to buy. So yeah. So. But basically, I, I joked. I showed it. I showed it the one thing. This is it's it's just it fills pages upon pages of all the all the sets I inventoried. 
before I left. It's just oh I mean, it's wow, just, it's nuts. Like I said, I mean, I got <laughs> like I said, I mean, those of us that worked for Lego, you have to understand. I mean, the deals and the discount were so good. I mean, they finally went. It used to be like thirty, and then fifty four four times a year, one a quarter. Now it's, it went toward the end. It was fifty any time. So someone returns a set, and you know, returns a set like this, and maybe it was sixty, and like. You know, it's it's only the restaurant gives me thirty. I mean, you sure you don't want to sell this online? It's going for like sixty or eighty online, you can get more money for it. But I'm gonna give you thirty in the store. They'd be like, if my son wants money today. We're gonna to have to return it. You're like, I'm going okay, because I know they somebody returned like a uh, oh gosh, I can't think it the, the the dragon one, the red dragon little set. And I was like, and I was like, are you sure you want to return that? And they returned it. And as soon as it went in the back room, it's like, read. It's a read want. It's a, you know, hold for read. <laughs> Because, I mean, like the castle stuff, I mean, if that, I mean, I didn't do it for everything. I mean, castle stuff was one of the ones I really enjoyed if it came in. Because, like I said, I mean, you know, look, I mean, look, look at all these water dragons. I got 16 open oh my gosh. water <laughs> dragons, and I have eight still sealed in a box in storage somewhere. So. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of dragons. But Ken actually, Ken, Ken sent me some parts because he went to the store because I hadn't had a chance to get the new parts. And so I do have carrots for my ice bears and, uh, and uh, dragon, so I'm, I'm I'm set. So <laughs> that that's just a few. Yeah, that and I have, some, I have some, I have characters. some other light. I have some lightsaber blades for like the jail cells or or portals oh. for my ice bears to invade other uh, other layouts within the show. Because I've actually uh, Michael Frederick. You guys remember the Napoleonic uh, display with the like four or four thousand figs on it last year? I think I saw that big it. One. Big this huge display, yeah. Yeah, he actually drove up to the Beloit show when we were down there. So we've been talking already. So, um, cool. you know, so basically we're talking about moving stuff around. So he's going with a little bit of a different setup this year. Um, I actually need to build some more stuff. Uh, I need to dig out my Imperial flag just so I can mod it a little bit. And uh, so, I mean, I still got stuff to do. I mean, I just want to try and get the castle done to the point where I'm comfortable taking it. And figure out a way to get lighting. That's why it's the elevation change on the back side, and then yeah. uh, elevating the keeps. So, I mean, I've got some stuff to do, but everything's been relocated. So all the basic wall set setups, that's good to go. That everything there is ready, except for the elevation change and stuff. I mean, it's it's a project. I mean, people understand. I mean, changing it every year and mo and mocking it and stuff and changing it. I mean, it takes time and try to figure it out. And so it's it's, it's interesting. So, but. So, Tom, you're looking forward to it then? Do you yeah, have any shows uh, between now and Brickworld or anything or not? No, this is my uh, – this is how you get a little bit of a breather. <laughs> so I have nothing until Brickworld and then uh, Virginia after that. And then things get crazy for a little bit. Really? Oh, you mean in the fall or whatever after Virginia? Yeah. Or what? <clears throat> yeah, there's uh, New Jersey. I'm also going to Scareback this year. Really? When is yeah. Scareback? When is that? It's um, the end of September, beginning of October time frame. Um, the Beyond the Brick guys are actually flying me out. They're also flying Akiyuki out. And That's so cool. we'll all kind of meet at Scareback and talk GBC. And I'm sure they'll get some video of something going on out there. Yeah, can't be doing it just for fun. <laughs> yeah, one of these years, I'd like to get to one of the European shows, but I mean, the castle needs to have custom custom boxes so I can get it on a pallet, like an enclosed pallet type kind of thing. And like yeah, that, that, gets, that gets pricey. Well, it would. I mean, I'd have to. I mean, I'd have to be able to sell a fair amount of Lego to do that. But we'll see. Probably need an inside tour trip before I do the uh, castle trip. So unless they want, unless they, of course they want like a little module or something for the uh, IKEA house. I mean, I'm willing to find something I can send to them for that. I, mean, I do have the I do have the barn. I got a second bar up there I can maybe texture. Got that uh got the second the first barn that I built for Jim West when he passed away. The first barn is up there on the top there just to clear. But I've got the textured one also. So I've got two barns. I mean I could probably I could probably part with one of them if I needed to. Well they uh from what I understand they usually fly you over to do the install so yeah one of these days i mean obviously you know i mean I, you know 
I'm uh, probably not the only one that builds with this much clay, but probably pretty, you know. You want me to put that upstairs in the box? No, that's good. Leave it? No, that's good. So, um, that's cool. Dave, are you got any shows between now and then, or are you still, you don't have any either? Wherever Tom goes. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty much it. So, so how far, how far, you know, because Dave, how far, how long of a drive is it to, to get to Tom's from where you live? Uh, without traffic, um, about 45 minutes. Um, awesome. That's pretty good. With traffic, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half or two hours. Or three uh, hours. Yeah, or route, hours. Oh, man, route three is horrible. <laughs> well, at least, I mean, at least that's good. At least, you know, at least you guys are kind of somewhat close together. So that kind of helps too. So. Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. Uh, at least you look at how many miles we actually are apart. 45 minutes is kind of quick, Dave. <laughs> uh, we won't say anything. Yeah, I won't say anything. Hey, you know, that's cool. I don't get run run off the road by tractor trailer, so. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael was going to join, but he said, the Pride and Tribe of my son streaming Amazon kids shows killed my bandwidth to join. Hey, that sounds like Dave when he's joined on all the early streams. He just doesn't have the bandwidth to join. Nope. So. Nope. Nope. I don't blame nope. it on kids shows, but nope. <laughs> well, it's kind of nice. I mean, I actually, it's kind of nice. I mean, you know, it's nice that you guys are both able to join. I was kind of shocked that you both didn't try to squeeze in front of the camera, but that's okay. No big deal. <laughs> nope. Not going to happen. Nope. 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 I don't want to get too close to him. <laughs> uh, I mean, traveling with them and rooming with them. That's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Check me down, Reed. I'll tell you about some uh, horror stories. <laughs> well, no, I mean I've roomed with I've roomed with just I've roomed with a few people. I roomed with Joe Mino before I roomed with uh, Matthew K. And so oh, for God. live, live oh. on the internet, I I won't say anything about any of my cur current or past roommates. If we go to after, if we go after stream, you know, like the you know, the post show, you know, I, I'll say anything there. But yeah, uh, I don't want to lose any roommates. I don't want to lose any roommates or or have roommates, you know, you know, hate me. You know, I still would like to be inside brick journal at some point you know i have a nice article at some point so you know uh so. track me down at brick world i can show you some fun videos of matthew k yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well the only thing with matthew k is you just got to make sure during like world of lights that if you have a mic for your speakers you just kind of make sure you kind of hold that or know quickly where the off button is real quick oh um, yeah oh yeah where? Talk, here you go here yeah. you go you can talk we are we are very familiar with mr k and his antics. So, but oh yeah, it's you know. But I mean, I mean, I mean that's I mean that's why I joked with my guys in Whistler because I mean those that you know if they haven't, I mean obviously they, they sh most of them probably have seen the castle and know how crazy it gets over there. But <laughs> I you know I think, you know hey you know bring your earplugs and bring your sunglasses because you might need both. So. <laughs> I'm I'm glad you're open to that, Reed. Thank you for uh, that um, piece of advice. Yeah, because I mean, I usually have a pretty open area behind mine, so I don't know how easy it'll be to get to the access for the the party zone behind Hope Castle this year. So we'll have to see. So um, I have to I have to let them know that you know I do have my normal uh, celebrities that like to show up, like Mr. Kevin Hinkle, and you know anybody who wants to come over and party and drink, you know, while we uh, jam the tunes. So hey, we have miners on the stream. So you're you're well, talking you're talking non-alcoholic, of course, right? Uh, sometimes. Depends. We know. We know. We know. If Matthew K is listening. It's. It's definitely going to be alcoholic. So. Oh, God, man. So, oh. But uh, well, no. I mean, actually, it's you know. I mean, it's all about fun. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, we're we're all responsible. Most of us are responsible, though. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, we're all staying in the hotel that's usually attached. So, I mean, whether yes. you're responsible or not, I guess you know either you're going to stumble to your room a hundred yards away, or you're just going to crash right there in the venue. Now, granted. You know, chances are the next morning, hopefully you're not still in the venue when we get ready to open it for the public. Might have to throw you in a cart and wheel you up somewhere. So well, I've never heard of anything like that happening. No. Oh no. No, not at all. <laughs> well if it happens, make sure you get video. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well we could just we could just take them into the pool area. <laughs> 
Hey, hey, you know, cause it, I mean, just, you know, get them prepped for the boat race, you know? <laughs> oh, that would be bad. That's the one thing. Now that's the one thing when I, when, for Technic and stuff, I actually do do a little bit of Technic, but most of it has been centered around the boat races. So when I did, when I did the boat race, the first year I used the, the small RC car, um, you know, the really cheap, cheesy one, twenty buck one or whatever back in the day, and it worked okay. wasn't great. I think actually I took off some, took off some, and just did circles. Um, I've had a really heavy boat that almost sank because some of the kids were in that in that inlet, and it got over there, and they were making waves enough to where my boat almost sank. I was like, I oh, just pull it out. I'm done. Nice. I, you know, I've had I've had some good stuff. I mean, it's all about fun. I mean, I I won a heat one year, but I I haven't come close to winning, but. Um, so it's one of those things where that's fun. So I do have boats. I've picked up a couple more pontoons this year um, at like uh, one of the thrift stores. Just, I mean, that was pretty much the only thing that I thought would maybe help me. So it's it's all about fun. I do like to do that. I mean, obviously I want to do it for, for Taylor. Uh, I did have a boat the one year, Taylor's Turtle. Um, Taylor liked uh, sea turtles. So I need to try and build something before Brick World if I can. So And the, tech, the Technic bin, I came across my Technic bin when I was with my bins today. I was like, Technic. Oh, that's Technic. Okay, cool. You know, so came across the paddles. I got the paddles somewhere too. They uh, they were in another bin. Like I said, when I started moving, bins that had been partially sorted got dumped into these big bins, and I gave away a ton of stuff. I mean, uh, you know, Ken's not in the stream tonight. Ken Heaps, he knows firsthand because he pretty much picked it up and distributed it to the Den Log members. So it's kind of like when I moved, it's kind of like a Bill Bourne of sorts. Anybody need shelves? Anybody do this? I mean, because I can't take this all with me. I mean, I I filled that 24 foot truck, 90 percent Lego, and most of it is Lego, like bricks and sets and uh, crazy, crazy. I, I dread the day I have to move my collection. Yeah, I mean, I, that's I mean, that's why it's kind of things where. Well, there's something on April of Facebook where somebody got like a, a storage thing, and so Ken was joking, say, "Hey, make sure you keep up on your bill." But yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll keep it up. It's gonna auto. But yeah, I would not want to lose that. I mean, that would be not. Fun. I'd rather have someone. I'd rather have someone try and steal it, where I can at least get that nice six-figure check from from my insurance company. Going, here you go. Oh, God, am I gonna replace it all? Hope I have it listed all down. I didn't put the pieces. I got the set. But I don't have the pieces listed. Um, you should use a styrofoam notebook for that. They're computers. Well, the nice, They're computers. Well, the nice thing is, the nice thing is also is I have a I have a small safe that has my stack of Lego receipts from over the years. You know, it's probably like this tall. If I were yeah. to stack them all on top of each other, you know, I saved them all. People always laugh. Why are you saving the receipts? It says, well, technically, if it's fire, you don't probably need them. But if if it's theft, I mean, well, we need to know what you had. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Here's the receipts. You know, just so you know, about that many are pick-a-brick cup receipts. I don't know what those what was in those cups other than I know a ton of really cool parts. <laughs> well, you, know, you should be – you got to watch out because um, you need to talk to your insurance company and make sure that it's actually covered in full because I know mine is not. It's covered up um, to a certain amount. They have a, a total amount, but then – what they don't tell you unless you go asking or dig into details is that there's a certain amount set aside for jewelry, a certain amount set aside for um, furniture and so on and so forth. So what's set aside for Lego is not going to cover it. Well, that or, or whatever, whatever I asked for, for renters for to cover it, I mean, is whatever. I mean, hopefully, and, and chances are, I probably don't even have enough. I mean, it's probably all things where, because, I mean, you, you look at the castle, I mean, there's, you know, the way I bought it, you know, that's maybe $800 worth of pieces. If I had to go replace it through lego.com, that's eight grand worth of pieces sitting down. Right. I mean, that, that's one of those things where, I mean, if you think about it, it's, you know, plus I got all kinds of pieces, some that maybe I can't even replace. I mean, that would be just, you know, if I had to go hunting for them, I'd take forever. But, I mean, it's one of those things where, I mean, the sets themselves I got listed, so they're all listed. I mean, they've got I've, they're on a half all the receipts somewhere, but for parts, I mean, grab bags. I mean, I bought grab bags when we had those. Right, that's always yeah. a oh, I, that's always, I never got any, but I remember them. Uh, those well, those are those are those are good stories on here. You can see Ralph on when we're telling those stories because he'll just love it. So yeah, yeah. but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where that's the stuff. I mean, 
and you truly wouldn't know. And you hope, yeah, nothing happens. That's why it's one of those things where I feel sorry for these people that are in all these flood zones and tornado zones. I mean, because you're right. I mean, and now granted, a tornado rips through something and freaking takes those one by one studs, man. Won't be anywhere near that. It's gonna be like a claymore going off, you know. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I got a question. Whenever you guys are ready, I got yeah. a question. So, say for example, like a tornado did hit your house, would uh, like, and you have like Lego that's covered by your insurance. Would your insurance just say, "Hey, here's like, here's all the sets that we covered," or how would they get the Lego to you? They give you a check. check. Probably give yeah, you a check and I'm hope like, you have it written down what you needed, I guess. you know. Yeah, but buddy. would they go buy it then? No, no, no. You, you, no, you, no. 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 That's what I'm saying. If something were happened to my collection, I, mean, I don't think I have enough vacation to have to spend the time to do it. It would take me years just to re find everything. That's the problem. I mean, and I don't have all the parts listed. I mean, some of the parts from some of the cups, that's why everybody jokes. I have actually, you know, I, I, all the cups and stuff that I've opened, I actually wrote down what was in them. I counted them. So, like uh, the stuff that Ken sent me, I actually counted all that stuff. Counted all that stuff, and it's just one of those things where you just you look at the little, you look at the notepad, and it's just like large cup, uh, small cup, large cup, small cup, large cup, small cup. You know, I just like, you know. So, I mean, I tried to count it so I'd kind of know, but the grab bags I never did. So, grab bags, I mean, they're just miscellaneous bricks scattered all over my collection. I don't know, right? How was in there other than on the fact that the uh mind storms kevin's like hey reed you might want some grab bags today there's a couple uh nxt uh mind storms in the, in the bag and I'm like really oh okay you know so i got like two bricks each brick was like eight bucks well wow. one brick works one brick doesn't well one has sound but no video the other one has sound actually tanya out in denver i think has both the bricks so i think she has both of my nxt bricks because it's like, ah, oh, she can play with them. Because she's she's building her own robot stuff and everything, so maybe she can get them to work or whatnot. I've got all the extra sensors and stuff from those MSTs because, you know, I, I bought a bunch of the bags, and they had all this stuff on it, and I haven't taken the time to learn it. But and it's the old NXT. I think it's the first one. It's not the two or the uh, or the EV3. I think it might be the first one. I can't remember. The, one. the RCX? No, no, just the first NXT because when they're NXT, yeah. NXT two, and then uh, EV three. Uh, oh, Technic history class. I don't really buy Technic. I can't really build it unless it's like with like bricks or something, like in a set, like Joker manner. Like this is fine, but like I don't normally go out and just buy like a Technic set. I don't know why, yeah. but it's just not my thing. So, so Tom, do you know? I it, I don't recall off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I can know. look it and up I, real quick now. That's okay. So I don't know, but I mean, I but I have some of that stuff. But you know, it's I actually did find and actually I did sell them to my members. I actually I didn't even think about Brickworld. I actually had some of those train controllers. Found them on a found them in a store on the Western Slope on a trip. It looked like they'd been on the shelf for twenty some years couple other people in in denver that do gbc and stuff like that picked them up but i i think i have four or five of my own i just gotta find them all so yeah there was a 2.0 and a and a regular nxt i remember this now now that i saw the pictures of them um they've changed the sensors a little bit yeah so the they changed the color sensor uh significantly and they got rid of the sound sensor which was kind of stupid um I mean, it was a stupid sensor to have in the first place. Uh, and they gave you a second touch sensor in, the, in 2.0. Huh. So, but there, it's basically there from a hardware point of view, there's no difference between the NXTs. It's just the software and, the, and what came in the kit. Okay. Yeah, I got a qu another question for you guys. What Batmobile should I use for my Gotham? For your what? My Gotham City. Here, I can show you it again. Uh. <clears throat> I just stepped on a box. and that, There goes the slave one box. But this thing, I'm going to yeah. put it like towards like the one of the ends. Well, what type of Batman are you putting in? Like what area? 
What era are you putting in? Um, I'm going to have the 1966 Batman and Robin. They're both like on one of the buildings. Like they're going yeah. up the building. But then I'm yeah. going to have another Batman um, grappling hook through the city. I just kind of yeah. don't know which one. Ultimately, it's entirely up to you. Yeah. Because this one's kind of smaller, and this one takes up a little bit more room. I just don't know how much room, like, when I get there. I might just bring both, and then I'll use, like, whatever one I can decide there. Well, you can always, you can make the other one uh, the same scale as the other one. Yeah. Just rebuilding. Yeah, I just got to rebuild, like, which one. Yeah. Because this one, the Joker Land, and this is from the 66 set. Yeah. The Batcave. Yeah, the Batcave's pretty cool. I like that you got this part in there. Yep. And it's got the down, it's got the... I just like all the little features out of it. Especially the figures. Like the figure that I like. You ever watch a show? What's that? You ever watch the show on YouTube? Um, I have a... I, my parents got rid of cable. So okay. I try to catch up on it with uh, MeTV. Yeah. Yeah, but... I think I got, uh, YouTube has them, like, the complete series. Yeah. yeah they're pretty funny. Yeah, I got the Riddler. I have the Joker. The Joker actually does have a mustache. He have his, has his mustache. Yeah. Which I think is pretty cool. Because that's because uh, he wouldn't shave his Cesar Romero. Yeah. He's like, I'm not shaving. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so I'm like, that's awesome that they put that in there. Because then it's different. And then, because I needed, I got this set. And I was like, I'm needing figures out of it for my Gotham. So I got my Catwoman. Mm. Which I'm nice. going to make that. Uh, there's a building up there. That uh, used to be the flower shop. Well, that's now going to be a jewelry store. Mm. So I think that's kind of my thing. And then. Very cool. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Yeah. My little thing for Brick World. You might have to make some signs that say like pow and ban. And... <laughs> yeah. I wonder if Eclipse Graph X has those. Mm. Uh, you, can check. you could check. Some of those places might. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you have that, but I mean, or, or just look out there and see because there's so many uh, aftermarket places now that you know yeah. are out there might have done it. Yeah, I remember seeing on Flickr someone did one like a brick built one that said like pow, like oh, crash. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that was I, pretty cool too. Those. Like, I think I might have to order this piece again, but it's got a little chip in it and it came like that. And I don't really like how that looks. You see, the, uh, chip. It chip kinda, in the paint. Or is it it's canopy? Like a, I think it's like it's not. I can sharpie over it, but I prefer not to. But it's got like a chip in the paint, and I'm like, oh, oh that sucks. Yeah. And I'm like, and I was like, I, I got this set new, like it's still in, in the box off at of eBay. So I'm like, it's not the guy, whoever I bought it from. It's not his fault at all. It's kind of like the Lego. You can always try customer service the other way. Yeah, that's, I'm gonna have to do that for this piece, and then it's pretty much it for parts. Yeah. Yeah, because stickers i can do easily like there's a couple like this i kind of messed up on it but it doesn't really you can't really see it yeah on it because of how because that would just go there yep yeah and then react. yeah mine, <laughs> mine's still in the box uh, yeah. somewhere i ha i kind of wanted to open it because i got the box and it kind of came like this mm. all bent so i'm yeah. like i'm gonna open it anyway it's, yeah i got yeah. it kind of as a birthday present my yep. grandma sent me some cash, so I put it up towards that, and then built yeah. it's my Batman area. My pretty cool. Batman. It's a cool set. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. Wish that we got Mister Freeze with it, but then that would have just booted up the price. Oh, oh, you mean like, oh, yeah, oh, the poly bag? Yeah. yeah. But then I was like, then it would make just this set like even more money. Well, I mean, that already was kind of hunt. I'd say a hunt for a Mister Freeze is maybe even. You know, maybe open or used on Bricklink or something. You might not, because I mean, a yeah, steel one you know, cost you four. Yeah, I'm going. I think I'm going the Amazon route. Getting, uh, I'm gonna get two of them, because one to keep in the bag, because then I can later sell that to go to college. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't really know if I, I'll, I mean, if I, I don't know if I bank on too much of that stuff, because I mean, yeah, you still gotta be able to sell. It. You'll find, I mean, some stuff you know gains value but i mean the stuff that really gains the value is the stuff that's hard to get the comic con the the ah, okay, you know yeah. those are the ones those are the ones that gain value faster than you can grow up so i mean you know yeah because i've got the 
another I bought another great hall because I'm like that's gonna I think gain value. Another Flintstones like I just going up the. Well, some of them might. I mean, some might, some won't. I mean, trust me, I'm sitting on stuff. I mean, actually, some of my poly bags that I had from I don't know seven, six, seven years ago, eight years ago, actually had more value when I sold them than some of the sets. So. Oh, yeah, I have an entire uh, bag full of poly bags. Like this is like this a bro broken box, a dimension box full of poly bags. Because I just save them. Because sometimes I just get poly bags and I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna buy two of that and then just keep one of the box. Cause, is that what I um, think it is? Yeah, because they got on Amazon they actually got uh, Mr. Freeze for like ten bucks. It's still in the bag, and I'm like, I'm just gonna get two of those. Because and then I got one for to open put with the set, and then one to keep in the bag. Because that's just I don't know, it's kind of my thing. Buy couple of poly bags really i won't buy like if I see, i'm not gonna buy another one of these because i don't want to oh. kind of well weird. kevin likes the fact that you'd sell it and pay for college so that at least you're on his good side for that yeah <laughs> pay, sell it for retirement but you might you might have to wait that long just to get some true value out you never know so yeah like, I was thinking about this today because I'm going to, when the Disney figures come out, the Series 2, I'm going to go, like, because they got box of 60, I'm just going to try to get all the Frozones and a couple of the Ednas because then I might, I'm thinking about making an eBay lot of all the incredible sets sealed. Maybe. Then, like, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I'd say it's always, always good to look and see what, if you're the first one to do it, like Kevin said, if you're some of the first, if you're the first person to do it, might be worth more than if you're like the last. Because if you're the first one and, pe and people who are really looking to get it for whatever reason, you know, good. I mean, you know, or around the holiday time if people can't locate those figs and they really want them. So yeah, that's the way to make money. If you can, if you can have stuff. I mean, because I th that's when you'll see the increase increase in prices around the holidays. If you know, Johnny asked for something that you know. Is, is the popular set this year and mom and dad go looking at the stores and they wait until too late. It's what? Not in the stores because it's the hot set. I remember that at the Lego store, you know, we're looking for the friend set. I said, yeah, that's the hot one this year. We haven't had that in a month and a half. <gasps> but I for Christmas. I says, yeah, but I wouldn't have waited till, you know, December 15th to do it because it's not there. Sorry. Yeah, because I got the new, right? well, I got the new, they knew you were looking for it. That's why they bought it. So they were hoping you're going to go spend two times the value of two weeks before Christmas because you waited that long to get right. it. That's, right. That's what the resellers are like. I mean, like I got this for Christmas. That's the giant Hogwarts. Like, I love yeah. this thing. Like, that thing's all my Girl Scout. I love it. It's like, what am I? I don't know if it's in my. It's this. I think they said it's the second biggest Lego set ever. We said. Uh, being the second, um, the first would be the Falcon. How how many pieces is it? Because I mean, I I don't it's know. Like six thousand something. Oh my gosh! I have the boxes. Maybe, like, yeah, like, probably pretty close then. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. six thousand or something. Because I know like well, the, they, got that, they got that Technic set that's on the horizon. I think I saw something somewhere, Brothers Brick or something. That's probably going to maybe even eclipse some of the other ones that are out there. You never know. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. the big white one. Yeah, that big. Crane, yeah, yeah, that I think it'll eclipse Technic sets. I don't think it'll eclipse the uh, <laughs> any of the rest of them, though. Yeah, hey, it depends how many black Technic pins are in it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can never have too many. Of, well, yes, you can. Never mind. Yeah. Well, actually, actually, if you're somebody like me who's building with mills, no, you can't have too many black Technic pins because the more I have, the stronger that stays together, and the more I can step on it. And not have to worry about stepping on it and sliding it like I did for a woman. I'm like, Ooh, well, that isn't supposed to happen. But oh, I can fix that. That's not bad. Yeah. So I have. Um, uh, we we did a monorail world record back in 2013 at Brick Fair, New England. And yeah. um, I built a bridge to get the monorail up and over the public to go from where the monorail was to over where the uh, <clears throat> over where. Nelug's train layout was. And after I built that bridge out of Technic, I still had a gallon bag of black pins. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a lot of pins. I'm gonna have to go hunt for pictures or video of that. That one's pretty uh, pretty good. Oh there's yeah, it's there. out there. Kevin says give 
Every everyone give Reed a gallon bag of black Technic pins. Pins for hope. <laughs> You'll not get my black Technic pins. I don't even know where mine are. <laughs> monorail epic, yeah. Epic monorail. I, I'm guessing there's probably a video out there somewhere on YouTube of that, probably. There's videos yeah. and pictures and all sorts of stuff. If yeah. Michael, if Michael was in here, you'd see what he's building. Trust me, he's probably he probably doesn't have ever enough black Technic pins. Uh, <laughs> his, his spaceship is freaking insanely huge. I mean, nice. I mean, it, I mean, it could qualify for a ship. It probably probably bigger than most ships, but it's one of those things where it's it's taking him months to build. So it's not going to be something you know. You're like, yeah, this is the ship that takes the two, three, four years to build. You know. So. <laughs> So, but yeah, he's got he's and he's using he's a lot of translucent panels and stuff. It's pretty cool. Seven feet, seven feet long. Nice. Pretty cool. He was on last week. He showed it off a little bit. So he's been working on it, and it's a neat one. Yeah. So actually, here you go, uh, Tom. Mr. Hinkle's got a question for you. Ask Tom how I can design a cooler GBC shirt than Beyond the Brick, one that he will buy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He won't, he won't buy it. <laughs> you know, first of all, if you want to get my attention, it's got to be a polo. Yeah, a polo shirt, Kevin, and make sure, you know, maybe you could do the, the character of his head, you know, maybe, you know, play, you know, <laughs> first unit, you know with a GBC module. If you no, included I... an actual soccer ball or basketball, he'll buy it. <laughs> Other than that, no. Better see if better yet see if Lego's got a Q element of an actual glow in the dark soccer ball. Uh, that, that would be interesting. Be, that'd be for a purist. It'd be like that's pretty cool. You know, maybe see if they have one of those. They do uh, other yeah. stuff glow in the dark. You know, maybe they've got a Q element glow in the dark soccer ball. You know, somewhere. Or um, uh, how about a, just a transparent one? A couple of those. That'd be cool too. Ooh. That's use much them. more likely than a glow in the dark one. <laughs> You'd never use them. What glow? Well, the transparent ones might get lost, you know, a little bit, you know. Right. Yeah, because you can't see them. Right. Right. Some <laughs> some little kid will be watching it, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna call that Gary. Let's follow Gary around the layout, and he'll be lost. He will go home with some little kid. Yeah. That's if he falls off the uh, GVC module, because you know if he reaches in, you know that module is going to fail. So. <laughs> you like derailing. I, I've it never out. seen that happen before. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Here, Kevin's got another. What about a design with Tom, Maiko, Akiyuki as the Holy Trinity, a la Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman? Only if I'm Wonder Woman. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, not not buying that at all. <laughs> then again, um, I'm gonna have to talk to Kevin. <laughs> that, that, actually, that, that'd be actually pretty cool. Yeah, there's 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 possibilities on the there. Description, but if he does it, I'll get it anyways. But you know, that'd be kind of cool. So yeah, special edition. <laughs> all right, you have to get Akiyuki's permission. No, you don't. Good luck with that. <laughs> Um, I am uh, I am going to bail on you guys. That's fine. You guys can bail. It's how late do you usually go with this? Oh, I am probably the longest, one of the longest streamers uh, out there. I mean, but I mean, it just depends. I mean, you know, I I've actually gone as late as eleven o'clock, twelve in the old days. I mean, these days it's eh, about three hours. I might go to ten, ten thirty. Just depends. So. Wow. Just depends, but you know we're good. I mean, I mean it's one of the things where you know it's. I mean, usually some streams I have lots of people. Other streams I don't very many. I mean, uh, Adam jumped in from the uh, Nebraska Brick days, which was kind of cool. So it just it's it varies. It's kind of slow right now because everybody's hyping up for the Philly. So all the people that normally be in my stream are kind of that are at least in that air, that bulk of those people would be on their prepping for Philly, and then I'm not sure Ken and. Uh, Tanya from Denver and Ralph, they're sometimes on, but not not this week, so I'm not sure what's going on. So it just depends. It's, you know, it's a variable. But, I mean, the good thing is, is we talked a lot about, you know, you, you, you a lot of information about the GBC. So, I mean, the first 
first hour or two if people are watching it that's kind of the information that's really critical for helping you know helping hype up Brickworld. I mean, I, you know, it's going to, I'm going to have probably what, eight, nine shows before Brickworld. So it's good to kind of talk about, yeah, shiny, you're, shiny, you're late. Cause we're talking almost like it's over. So you're really late this week. So, so shiny bricks just joined us in the chat saying I'm late and he is late this week. So. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. No, you're good, Tom. That's fine. All right. Well, now that, um, uh, we'll continue trying to get a camera to work, but, um, now that I got the rest of this to work, maybe I'll jump in again. Yeah. Well, I mean, audio works too. I mean, you know, I mean, it's one of those things where you don't have to really always be video. Video is nice if you got stuff to show. Um, but if you don't really have a lot to show, it's not one of those things where you actually have to have it. I mean, the voices and stuff is sometimes enough. So. Well, but this would have been ideal because my house is kind of clean because I have all these people coming <laughs> over tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's next kind of thing is that that's the stuff that makes these streams cool too. Is for people who are jumping in from conventions and stuff, which is nice. And that's what I, you know, is hopefully in the future as I'm doing Friday Night Bricks, if people are at conventions, maybe Brick Fair, Virginia, wherever, if they want to jump in and and show off stuff. I mean, that's kind of the cool thing. Is it's nice that you know that if you if you're familiar with the stream, you're like, oh, you know what, hey, there's Reed Stream around. Let's jump in and show them, you know, some of these cool GBC modules we just somebody brought that we hadn't seen in forever so it's kind of things where it's always fun it's just you know Kevin got me going down this road I like it you know it's not like I you know have much to do you know on a Friday night could be out getting drunk but you know hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah that I, got, I could raise it you know do an adult swim pipe in well that, that could be you fun. know I, I've got these weird clear plates here and I probably shouldn't do any really weird stuff with these you know you shouldn't. Don't want to know. Don't want to know. <laughs> I do know it would be painful, so don't want to know. Yeah, we, we have joked about that enough. So that's, <laughs> oh, that's fine. Thanks, guys. And thanks for thanks for joining us. I mean, I appreciate it. Uh, camera, no camera. It was still great to have you, Tom. You gave us a lot of good information, and that's and that's what it's all about: giving people aware of the different themes, the different stuff that happens at Brick World. You know, all that. That's kind of what I'm trying to, you know, really get out there because there are so many different themes. And the people who haven't been to the brick world, I'm trying to at least raise the awareness for people that actually, if they haven't been, if they're in April and they haven't been to a con yet, you know, what kind of goes on and whatnot. And I probably need to show off more pictures, but I can organize those. I got plenty of those. So, all sorts of fun stuff. That's what happens. Yeah. Well, you have, you have fun with your set draft tomorrow. That looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> Alrighty. Good night, all. Good night. Have a good night, guys. That was quick. <laughs> yeah. Are you out too, Dave? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Sounds Take care, guys. Have, have, have a good night. Way. Yep. I... Well, you know, maybe we'll just uh, maybe we'll just make it a short stream tonight, and maybe we'll just go to a kind of like a post show. Oh, David's David had. Oh. oh yeah. Goes. Read. Um, I actually signed up to run the minifigure swap, so that's why I'm gonna yeah. get a. What when the Disney figures come out? That's why I'm gonna get a couple of like each character. So that's why I'm gonna get a couple of Frozone, so that way I can go. Hey, yeah. I've got these because these are the guys that I have yeah. right now that I'm looking yeah. to get rid of. Yeah, yeah, and actually, I guess while I'm while I've got everybody before we before we end the stream, I was gonna say that's the one thing too. If you're if you're headed to Brick World, they are looking for people to run uh, some of the drafts, set drafts, uh, looking for people to lead some activities, workshops, whatnot. Uh, definitely, if you're already registered and you haven't been into that area, definitely kind of take a look at that. Um, it's one of those things where there's so much going on. I mean, I'm going to teach people how to make Lego capes, tents, uh, sails, stuff like that, custom cloth items. And like you said, uh, Brick Freak's going to do a minifig swap. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I know there's some drafts. They're still looking for people to lead those. So definitely uh, uh, check out the website if you're registered. They're looking for people to help out. If you haven't registered for Brickworld, I would get on it. I think registration closes at the end of this month, the 30th. I'll, I'll, uh, I know space request ends at the end of the month. So if you're planning on going and you want to display your space requests, do need to be in by the end of the month. And I would say the sooner the better because they do start trying to plan and uh, they have already been trying to tweak some of the bigger groups displays. Wislug, I know we uh, put ours in already, and I know they've been tweaking ours a little bit to make room for stuff. So – 
definitely a great show. It's in Chicago. It's at the Renaissance, uh, Schomburg Convention Center and Hotel. Hotel is attached. Um, I actually like to rent a room there, but I see there's hotels around the area there. Uh, it's real close to the Lego store. It's, you know, lots of restaurants there. It's a, it's a great convention. It's This will be year number eight for me at Brick World Chicago. And so, I mean, I've got a lot of volunteer badges and stuff. As you look at mine, I've volunteered many years. Uh, I did an activity leader, it looks like, in 15. I think I was an activity leader last year as a volunteer. So, I mean, I've done a bunch of stuff. So, it's one of those things where uh, if, you, if you like to volunteer and help out, they always need volunteers, crowd control, all that stuff. Make sure you sign up for that. It's always fun. You volunteer you do get that nice volunteer brick if you're an activity leader you get the activity lead activity brick activity leader so uh, i do have a lot of those from the different years that i helped out it's kind of cool it's a nice extra brick so uh, but yeah always uh definitely if you're thinking of going this is a good time to start prepping i mean because it was still a couple months out but they need people to lead workshops all that stuff so <coughs> definitely hit up that site but I think we're going to go ahead and edit tonight. It's going to be kind of an early one. Uh, for those of you guys that are uh, out there that are regulars that might have that in, uh, invite your link, definitely uh, think about post-show whatnot. So uh, thanks for everybody watching. Definitely if you wanted to hear all of the GBC stuff with from Tom, definitely go back to the beginning. Did talk a fair amount of stuff. We did talk to about a year, about at least an hour, hour and a half about GBC before we got a little sidetracked. So. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll see you next week uh, for Brick World Hype number four, episode 51. Keep in mind, uh, May the 4th episode will be, May the 3rd episode will be a special one. That's our one year, my one year of doing this. Hoping to have a lot more stuff there. Might have some giveaways for that one also. So have a great night, everybody. Thanks for joining. If you uh, Make sure you like, you know, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Can't type. And we are going to go 